Hey guys, welcome to another exciting video from our channel, Engine Nation. In this video today, we take you through some major updates about the FAA's crazy decision to stop SpaceX orbital Starship test flights. SpaceX is working hard to prepare for the first orbital flight of Starship, and the colossal 120 meter tall monster of SpaceX appears to be ready. However, the Federal Aviation Administration must approve a launch test before it can proceed. In a rare sign of material progress, SpaceX and the FAA have finally released a draft environmental assessment of the company's South Texas Starship launch plans. However, it's worth noting that the FAA's glacial progress could cause SpaceX orbital Starship launch debut to be pushed back to 2022. To understand why it's taking so long and what SpaceX will need to do in the near future, let's first look at what this environmental draft assessment entails. As soon as SpaceX begins orbital launches, the process of obtaining permission to launch a Starship and its Super Heavy booster, it will be the largest and most powerful rocket in space flight history. The Boca Chica site, which SpaceX eventually chose for its first private launch facilities, was never going to be easy coming out of the wetlands of the South Texas coast. Originally intended for the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy, it was later repurposed for the BFR, which is now the Starship. The wetlands are surrounded by sensitive coastal habitats, home to several threatened or endangered species, and is only a few miles from the city, where the crow flies. Their temporary population fluctuated from a few thousand to tens of thousands, and the draft reception and analysis, as well as its timing, were mixed. On the one hand, SpaceX's draft environmental assessment, which was completed with FAA oversight and assistance from the US Fish and Wildlife Service, provides a number of reasons for optimism, indicating that the company is taking a pragmatic approach. The company has actually pursued a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, to overcome the inevitable environmental review and a launch license approval hurdles that stand in the way of the orbital South Texas Starship launches. Most importantly, if approved, this means that SpaceX Starbase PEA will act as a foundation or stepping stone, allowing the company to start small and gradually expand the scope and nature of its plans for Boca Chica. What's more, while the Starship is still in development, SpaceX has proposed a maximum of 23 flights operations per year, including up to 20 suborbital Starship test flights and three orbital launches or super heavy hops. SpaceX would enter an operational phase after working out enough kinks for slightly more confident Starship operations, allowing for up to five suborbital Starship launches and five orbital Starship launches. In other words, SpaceX's initial draft is extremely conservative, requesting permission for what amounts to a bare minimum concept of operations for orbital Starship launches, as well as ship and booster landings back on land, after all 10 possible launches. A PEA and subsequent launch license approved, as it would, likely give SpaceX just enough slack to perform basic Earth orbit launches and no more than one or two orbital refilling tests per year, with a maximum of three to five orbital launches per year. A five launch maximum, for example, would almost entirely prevent SpaceX from launching starships to Mars, the Moon, and possibly even high energy Earth orbits without exhausting its annual launch allotments. SpaceX proposes to build two permanent integration towers on a single mission, in addition to the massive launch tower that will support these orbital flights. Each tower would be approximately 480 feet tall with a 10-foot lightning rod on top and black cladding to integrate the Starship Super Heavy launch vehicle. According to the company, they also included a map showing the locations of the launch towers. One integration tower would be built adjacent to the Pad A and another would be built adjacent to the proposed Pad B, as shown in the diagram. The launch vehicle would be vertically integrated on the launch pad, with the Super Heavy mated to the launch mount on the Starship, which is mated to the Super Heavy. 
Perhaps most importantly, the draft PEA, as proposed, would categorically preclude SpaceX from performing the NASA human land system moon landings, for which it was awarded nearly $3 billion. To deliver a depot ship and around 1,200 tons of propellant into orbit, each HLS Starship moon landing contract is expected to require anywhere from 10 to 16 launches. However, in terms of SpaceX's chances of developing a Starship as quickly as possible, this is actually a good thing because SpaceX has slimmed down draft PEA above all else. The FAA should have an easier time approving this than the PEA seeking permission for a Starship's ultimate goals. Hundreds of launches per year starting from the ground up with this bare bones PEA approved. SpaceX would then be able to build on the foundation with more environmental assessments such as increasing the maximum launch cadence of the Starship. What are the next challenges that SpaceX will have to overcome? Of course, before any of the above matters, SpaceX needs the FAA to turn its first draft PEA into a favorable environmental assessment, not a guarantee, based on the content of the draft itself and associated appendices. SpaceX appears to have a good chance of receiving a finding of no significant impact, also known as a FONSI or mitigated FONSI. However, SpaceX began the process of developing that draft in mid-2020 with an FAA announcement in November 2020. The implication is that the FAA managed to turn a three to four month draft release process into a grueling 10 to 15 month ordeal that included an uphill battle. Given that SpaceX will have to compete for an orbital Starship launch license in South Texas, it's becoming more likely that the Super Heavy and Starbase Starships will be technically ready for an orbital launch test. The public now has until mid-October to read and comment on SpaceX's draft PEA, after which the FAA and SpaceX will review the comments and hopefully turn the draft into a completed review. Well before the FAA is ready to approve or license them, barring delays. The FAA will hold virtual public hearings on October 6th and 7th before the public comment period ends. Following the release of this draft assessment, Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX, recently asked for support on Twitter on October the 18th, shortly after the FAA released the draft document. It's difficult to imagine the agency approving an orbital Starship launch license or even a one-time experimental permit in the final weeks of 2021. In the end, nothing short of a minor miracle will be able to prevent the FAA's environmental review and licensing delays from delaying the launch of the Starship into orbit. By the end of the year, there's a chance that the Super Heavy Starship and the Starbase Orbital Launch Site won't be ready for orbital launches, but it's becoming increasingly difficult to believe that all three will not be able to be proof tested, qualified, and ready to go in the next month or two. SpaceX initially imagined a Starship-like spaceship in 2005. SpaceX began developing the launch vehicle at its South Texas launch facility, commonly known as the Boca Chica launch site, after several design revisions. On September 29, 2019, the first full-scale prototype Starship Mach 1 was presented. Starhopper, a reduced prototype, had the first successful hop on July 25, 2019 and Starship SN15 completed the first successful suborbital flight on May the 5th, 2021. The newest full Starship prototypes, Starship SN20 and Super Heavy BN4, were scheduled to make their first orbital flight in September 2021. The Dear Moon project, NASA's Artemis program and SpaceX's Mars program are all expected to employ Starship in future and envisioned space missions. The Super Heavy Booster and the Starship Spaceship make up the Starship. The primary purpose of the Super Heavy is to provide thrust to the spacecraft while also carrying enough fuel to allow it to slow down and navigate to the landing pad or catching arms. The spacecraft will subsequently accelerate to orbital speed and execute activities in accordance with the mission's goals. Starship must be refueled in orbit, using its tanker versions for missions that involve traveling to higher orbits, leaving the Earth or even the Sun's sphere of influence. Without substantial maintenance in between flights, both Super Heavy and most Starship versions can re-enter the atmosphere and land vertically. Starship's production starts with a 4mm thick, 304 liter stainless steel sheets that are 72 inches wide. The sheets are bent into 9 meter diameter rings. 
These stainless steel rings are then welded together to form a segment, which is subsequently stacked and welded together to make the Starship and Super Heavy bodies. Super Heavy and Starship would be built differently from then on. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Engine Nation for more videos like this one. Until next time.